Good morning, night, evening, everyone, and welcome to another science video. This is part two of a mini-series I'm doing on the four Earth spheres. Today we will discuss the geosphere. The geosphere consists of all the solid inorganic matter of Earth. It includes the crust, the mantle, the liquid outer core, and the solid inner core, along with all of the metals and metalloids of the periodic table. A few examples are chalk, rocks, steel girders, concrete, and the buttes of Monument Valley, Utah. Did you know that those buttes are actually volcanic rock hardened after a volcano went dormant and after the volcano eroded, that's all that was left? But volcanoes. Yes, let's move on to volcanoes. What do volcanoes do? Well, they're best known for spewing lots of hot rock that eventually hardens and creates new land. Like Hawaii. But that's not the only way that new land is created. It's all based off of plate tectonics, and the idea that the crust is divided into plates that rest on a layer of molten rock known as the lithosphere, above the mantle, but underneath the crust. This liquid allows the plates to move around, and because they move around, they often collide and pull apart. Three different ways that they can interact with one another are at different boundaries. The convergent boundaries, when they come together, when they collide, crunch up land as a result of subduction, where one plate overrides the other and one gets sucked back down into the lithosphere. Volcanoes form at only water to land convergent boundaries. Divergent boundaries form what are called rifts, where lava comes up between the rift in two plates. There will not be any volcanoes at divergent boundaries, and most divergent boundaries are actually underwater in the ocean. Complex boundaries are strange because the two plates can move along one another in any number of ways. The most common complex boundary is between that of the North American plate and the Pacific plate along California. Here's a simple animation showing you the general way that they move along one another. Kinda slide up against one another, you see? Now, let's move on to volcanoes. Volcanoes can form at convergent boundaries where an ocean plate underrides a continental plate. When the ocean plate subducts underneath the continental plate, it crushes up the land. Volcanoes can form when rocks melt in one of three ways. By decreasing pressure, by increasing heat, or by adding volatiles. Volatiles are gas or water that get trapped in the rock as it melts. These volatiles lower the melting point of the rock and allow it to push up. When it pushes up, it creates a volcano on the surface. The volatile in question? The water from the ocean that got trapped between the plates as it subducted. Volcanoes can also form where there are hot spots. Hot spots in the mantle where it allows molten rock to push up through the surface and create island chain. They create chains because these hot spots do not stay in one place. These hot spots tend to move around a lot. That's why you get the island chains of Hawaii and Iceland. Aside from volcanoes, there are actually a number of problems that the geosphere faces. Erosion is a big one, because if it erodes a barrier island, such as the islands off the coast of New Jersey, New Jersey is much more susceptible to storm surge. Earthquakes are another big one. That's what happens when two plates collide, and sometimes they don't collide so nicely, and they create an earthquake. Earthquakes are usually felt throughout the world, and can have lasting impacts on different areas. And lastly, there's volcano damage, because a lot of volcanoes don't erupt all the time. It allows for snow to form on top of them. When this snow melts, when the volcano becomes active, it creates giant mudslides down the side of the volcano called lahars. Lahars can cause large amounts of property and environmental damage. Because lahars can cause such large amounts of damage, they are often very expensive when they hit populated areas. Another sort of damage that volcanoes can do is, well, from the lava. Sometimes the lava can be very explosive and very runny and can actually travel downhill at speeds of over 100 miles per hour. Let's recap what we learned about today. Today we learned about what makes up the geosphere, a couple examples. We learned about the buttes of Monument Valley, Utah. 
we learned about volcanoes, plate tectonics, and plate boundaries, the three kinds of boundaries, convergent, divergent, and complex boundaries. We also learned about different problems that occur within the geosphere that you should watch out for, especially lahars, that you didn't even know those existed, huh? Nope. Remember to watch the rest of the videos in the series, and if you have any questions or comments, leave a comment and I'll get back to you then. Alright? Have fun. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a good night.